Alright, so I'm going to take a look at the actual decomposition from Insight. And again, the decomposition graph, what we're looking for here, like our big picture stuff, is that we're going to be talking about um, what is the overall contribution factor? Like, what's causing the most variation over that time period? Is it the seasonal? Is it the trend? Is it both? And so we need to do some calculations to prove that one way or the other. So, this graph, the context here is that we're talking about the occupancy rate of backpackers in New Zealand, and it's measured in percentages. So for instance, this number down here shows that I have a 30% of my backpacker, backpacker beds, basically, and backpackers are occupied at that part of the season or that part of the year. And we can see it goes up and down, up and down quite a bit, um, and that's as we'd expect. Now our trend, remember in, as we've looked at before, the trend is what we call our smoothed data or our overall average, and that's this one through here. Um, what that does is it looks at it sort of on the big picture, the big scale, from year to year what's going on, instead of from day to day or season to season, which is what happens when we look at it. At that detail we see all the big ups and downs happening. So the trend is what we call a smoothed trend or a moving mean. They've averaged everything out and given us just the big picture of what's happening. So when we want to calculate our percentages here, first thing that we need to do, our number one step, I guess, um, is going to be to get the raw range, or the range of the real data. Like, in reality, what was the highest point it ever reached, and what was the lowest point it ever reached. And you're looking at the raw data, what actually happened. So looking at our graph, I'm just going to look for the highest peak, and it looks like it happens in here. That's my highest peak. And I'm going to guess here, again, you don't have to be super precise, but I'm going to guess that that's at about 65%. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to look for the absolute lowest peak here. And you can see that that's at the end of the time scale here. So that's my lowest. And I might guess that that's something hmm, close to 30, maybe 28, something like that. Oops. So we're going to say here 28%. So I know the highest it ever got was 65% occupancy, and the lowest it got was 28% occupancy. So we need to calculate the range for that. So we literally take the highest minus the lowest. And we're going to get 65% minus 28%, or just 65 minus 28 and that's going to give us 37%. Um, so we know that the biggest change for us was a 37. Okay, So that's our first thing. We need to get that raw to work with. The next thing we're going to look at, pick up a different color here, um, the next thing we're going to look at is now the range for the actual trend. So our second point is going to be for our trend the trend range. So we're looking at that smooth trend line and we're trying to figure out what was the highest and what was the lowest that it ever was. So the highest point is somewhere in here and I'm going to guess that that's about 50% from looking at the graph reading off here. You can see that and just reading off the graph there. And I'm going to guess that the lowest here, if we look along, happens someplace over here. And again, just literally by reading off the graph you can pull out a ruler if you want and actually hold that across the page to get a more precise number. But I'm going to say here that's roughly 40%. So same thing we did for the raw range. You need to calculate the highest minus the lowest. So in this case it is 50% minus 40%. And we're going to get ourselves to 10%. So in the trend, there's a maximum range there from the highest point to the lowest point, a change of 10% from when it was highest to when it was lowest. So again, this 37 is telling us, 37 here is telling us what the actual change was between the highest point and the lowest point. And the 10% here is telling us what the change was between the highest and the lowest point of the trend. So the next thing we're going to want to calculate is going to be our seasonal range. So number three is going to be the seasonal.
and here we're going to take a look at our average seasonal effect. And just so that you're aware of this, this graph down here, it's not the seasonal effect from each individual year, this is the average seasonal effect. So all the years averaged up, um, all the years averaged up, and we're just using that average seasonal effect here. So you see they're exact same from year to year. But we want to know, for that average seasonal effect, what's the maximum range. So we can use a scale over here. Might pick off a top and a bottom, and because they're all the same, it should be the same. So this one in particular is tricky because we know we have negative numbers here. And our reason for that is because the zero, that's, that's the overall average or where the trend is relative to, to everything. So this is kind of like the trend, what's expected at zero, and then our seasonal effect can either be above that or below that, such as these ones here, these points here, if you can see, are below the trend, so those are going to be negative numbers. So at the top here, I'm going to guess that I'm at about, I don't know, 16%. And at the bottom down here, I'm going to guess that I'm at uh, about a negative 12%. And I need to calculate the difference between those. So if there are both positive numbers, your difference, you guys will be fine. Mathematics, you can do the subtraction. But if you've got a negative number and you're not that agile with your mathematics, keep in mind that you're going to have to look at the total distance between these two. So I'm going to do my highest, which is 16. I'm going to subtract my lowest, which is a negative 12. And keeping in mind that two negatives make a positive it really ends up adding those. Now if you put that into your calculator, 16 minus a negative 12, you're fine. It'll still come out the right way. But if you think about that together, there's a difference of 28 between those two points because 16 above to 28 below, you've got to go a total distance of 28% between those. So our seasonal range is 28%. And what we need to do now is think about, okay, well, what's the percentage contribution of each of these? Knowing that the overall range, all right, this is our overall up here, the overall variation is 37%. So 10% of that roughly came from the trend, and 28% of that roughly came from the seasons. And they don't have to add to 37, don't worry, they shouldn't. But you can see here that we're just comparing relative sizes here. So what I need to do next is calculate those comparisons. So to figure out what the percentage change is relative because of the trend, I'm going to take this value here, the 10%, and I'm going to compare it to the 37% that I know is the overall, and then times by 100. So again, I'm taking the 10% that I know is the difference for the trend, and I'm comparing it to the 37, that's where that's coming from, from the 37 overall, so the 10% from the trend over the 37 overall, and you times it by 100 to get a percentage, and we get here, if you do some rounding, roughly 27% of that data comes from that contribution of the trend. So let's take a look at the seasonal effect. I've got my 28%, so I'm going to compare that, 28, to the 37 for the overall, times by 100 to get my percentage. And when we do this, we see that we get roughly 76%. I'm rounding up. It was 75.6 on the calculator. I'm just going to say 76%. So we're looking at this and we're going to say the trend accounts for only 27% of the variation and the seasonal effect accounts for 76% of the variation that we see. So, you can summarize that the trend only accounts for 27% of the variation but the seasonal effect accounts for 76% of the variation. 
So the seasonal is the bigger one. So seasonal is the bigger contribution. Bigger contributor. So again, when you get these percentages, um, you're looking to see which of them is bigger to say which has preside, provided the most variation in the data. And when we look at it, again, if you look here at our trend line, it doesn't move very much. But seasonally, we have this huge swing back and forth every single year. So it does make sense here that the seasonal accounts for a lot more of the overall variation than the trend does. So I'm going to stop the video here and do another one, just so it doesn't go on forever, about the residuals. Because the first thing that we've talked about here is just which is the biggest contributor. That in itself is one part. I'm going to come back and take a look at talking about the residuals that you see on this graph and what they mean exactly in the next video.